Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Lord, we are finishing our Genesis chapter 40. Be with us, Lord, today. Let us finish uh, the fourth part of Genesis commentary. Well, <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know if possible, but uh, tomorrow will be a book talk. And then possibly from April 9th, Sunday, we're going to try to launch Song of Solomon. If not, if I don't have time to finish, then we'll continue with uh, Genesis 41. But we'll see. Well, this is Genesis chapter 40, verse 16 through 23. Let me try to read first and then... Uh, follow up on that verse by verse. This is NIV. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were the three baskets of bread. In the top basket, there were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. But the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and impale your body on a pole. <laughs> the birds will eat away your flesh. Impale means to cut it up. Okay. Three days later, while the king was celebrating his birthday with dinner for his officers, he sent for a personal servant and the chief cook. He restored the chief cupbearer to the position and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph interpreted for them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Wow. How do you forget that? I mean, it's basically, yeah, well, that's how I guess humans are. He was desperate, gets interpretation. And it gets fulfilled. And he said, oh, Serenara, forget you. I forget you. So, and that wraps up chapter 40. And then he picks up the life of Joseph in chapter 41, two years later. So it's a good pause to think about. Um, so the story is, you know, well, seems like he's... He's a good interpreter, very favorable interpretation. So he said, well, I mean, I mean too, me too. I had a dream and, and dream. And then he says, well, unfortunately for you, the birds eating off of your basket is because you're dead. Your head will be chopped up, put on a pole. And birds will eat off of your eyes and flesh. And that's what they did to put terror fear in the powerful leaders they basically public display hanging you know decapitating the body and put, put in the post and so crows and all these birds will come and eat uh, birds usually in 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 that kind of dream interpretation even old testament context especially the black birds and they represent evil Right. Um, I remember actually seeing a vision of bird. So I was at uh, Princeton Theological Seminary. I did a three-day lecture there. I remember um, doing my first day lecture, and this guy was just really piercing eyes, looking at me. Pretty gave me a nasty look. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, I'm just doing a lecture, you know. And so, and and he follows me to the professor's quarter and. And he was kind of sharing with me whatever he was going through. And what happened was that as I was praying for him, and I saw in the back of his back, so I in the in the vision, I'm not literally saying, and I want to start praying for him in the back, there was a bird claw, like deep inside his, you know. So I was touching his back and applying the oil of the Holy Spirit, saying that Lord heal him from this bird claw that is piercing his skin and and he freaked out. He he. Uh, after my prayer, he said, "My God, God heal me." And he said, "I'm almost semi-professional athlete." And so he's been, 
you know, doing all kinds of activity, he just had this excruciating pain in his back. So he would actually go to medic, you know, the hospital, MRI, nothing wrong with him. It just has excruciating pain in his back. Uh, well, because I guess it was a spiritual manifestation. What happened is that he uh, he had a, a, a issue with pornography. He was a young young seminarian. He had issue with pornography, and and uh, the devil has been telling him, well, you know, with you, I mean, you with this kind of nasty habit, you should never be a, you should not be in ministry. So they try to disqualify him for watching a pornography. I mean, that is. Yeah, it is so sad that uh, unfortunately in America right now, they say 45% of men are addicted to porn. And there's no difference between Christians or non-Christian or pastors or deacons or doesn't matter. It's just cross the border. 45% of American pastors are now addicted to porn. So that's statistically speaking, I'm not saying that's how it should be. I'm just so sad to report to you. So then, I mean, if that is disqualification, 45% of the pastors in America should quit ministry. But of course, you know, it just that's not how it works. So, so I said, no, no, you just need to repent, you know, and, and move on next day. Get over it. You know, don't do it. It's like, what's the big deal? Right? Just don't do it. Don't let the accuser disqualify you for watching porn. You're a young man. I understand. So just don't do it. It's going to hurt your marriage. Um, I said, I pray over him and I took all the bird's claw out and many decades later, I mean, literally, I think, I don't know, 10, 15 years later, I met him again and he's doing wonderful ministry and became a spiritual leader of, of the city. So praise the Lord for that. So birds sometimes, you know, have that kind of interpretation, I guess. And so in, when the king had his birthday celebration, he pardoned clemency or amnesty. And I, I looked up those two words because actually it, it stems out of that, you know, uh, proclamation of amnesty from, and it's so funny how uh, two different words has a different meaning. Clemency start from the French word or Latin word perdone or French word pardon. Uh, it's exchange of grace. Right? You've done wrong, but you are pardoned. You're graced, right? Covered. Or amnesty means amnesia, which means to forget. So whether the Pharaoh gave amnesty for, for God, or just forget about it, or cover your grace, uh, it was a tradition, proclamation of amnesty, a royal, royal proclamation, an Egyptian inscription. They actually have it in a case where um, the pharaoh would forgive the criminals on his birthday. So this is the case. So it's histor historically correct. The key verse of this is not that pharaoh forgave, but the fact that Kupir forgot. <laughs> right? Uh, talk about discouragement. When you're in a situation where it's just hopeless, then you're hopeless. But when that hope is kindled and let down again, kindled and let down again, that's when you really become hopeless and become fatal. They said uh, the study on the war criminal, POW, prison of war, uh, one guy wrote a book on how a bunch of them were caught as POW, caught in the prison. I think it was Vietnam, I think. If I remember correctly, it was Vietnam. And you know, uh, Vietnamese were very cruel. And Americans were very cruel to Vietnamese. <laughs> they were all cruel to each other. It was during war. And POWs, the guys who keep on saying like, oh, I think by this Christmas, we, we should be home eating turkey with our family. Those people keep on, keep on, keep on and get disappointed at year after year. Never made it. They, they died in the camp. But people who just didn't just go on having false expectation, but just kept on, no, just live by day, <laughs> right? Live by day. And then those are the ones who survive. I thought that was interesting. Here, this is what um, 
Joseph's going through. I mean, he went through a lot right? at 17, right? And he's now already 28, 11 years. Uh, 28, he's 28, 17, 28, yeah. So almost nine years, because uh, it's going to take two years for him to. So is it right? 17, to, yeah, 28, 11 years. So he he's let down again. Surely not. I mean, surely he thought, wow, the cupbearer will remember. No, completely forgets until it benefits him later that he remembers. So I don't want us to get discouraged. Some of you are like, well, when would God answer me? Well, if not today, just keep on plugging away to not give yourself to false hope amen so father give us courage to take the reality as it is continue to pick up our cross daily and without making all the fuss just keep on lord keeping on with our faith lord. give us that grace because you will never forget you will never forget us thank you in jesus name amen love you guys see you tomorrow mm -hmm.